to another video. I'm your girl Katrina. As you can see, I have my embroidery machine running behind me, my MT-1501. I'm jumping right into today's video because I have a lot to embroider. I'm doing custom sweatsuits for a church. I have taken on this church and they want me to embroider their sweatsuits. So I'm going to show you how I embroider on custom sweatsuits, do the placement for the left chest logo, the left um, the left pants logo, and the sleeve cut. So I got a number of things going. So today I'm going to be using a few products to help me and make production go a little faster and smoother. I'm using the 4.25 by 13 freestanding arm. I'm using that for the pants. I'm using my hooping station. I'll show it to you up close. And I'll be using for the sleeve cuffs, I'll be using my 8-in-1 fast furs. Okay? I'm going to knock all these orders out and I'll show you how they all come out. If this is your first time here, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find today's video helpful. Now, let's jump into some embroidery. So of course I have my stitch out that I use for placement. Everybody ordered different color sweatsuits. So we have three different colors, but still getting the same color logo on each one. Some of them look really good because of the black, you know, but the black sweatsuits, you can't really see the black that well. This logo is right under 4,000 stitches. So it's not taking a long time at all to knock out going 800 stitches per minute. So the most time I'm spending is actually hooping and changing out the garments. But this doesn't take long at all. Real simple, easy logo to do. Okay, so this is how I actually place my logo on my pants leg. If it's a left chest logo. I keep saying left chest, but left pocket logo. I'll take my ruler and I'll go to the edge of the pants. Right here, like at the seam. So right at where the seam is from the edge. Right above because the pocket ends right here so I'm just taking this and I'm going over about two to two and a half inches I have my stitch out already always have a stitch out okay so here's my stitch out if I'm placing it at two and a half and this is a size large pants so the medium I was over at two every size is going to be a little bit different starting at the two and a half mark two to two and a half mark and I'm finding the center of the frame I'm just going to hold my finger there and I'm going to place a little dot that's what I'm doing using my fabric marker placing a little dot or you can place a little tape let's place a little piece of tape right there so that way I'll know where to line it up and I'll know where my center is for my design remove that now I'm going to use my freestanding arm, my freestanding base. You can use this for so many different um, garments, from baby shirts, pants legs. I mean, you name it, you can do pretty much anything here. I got my 5x5 five five hoop. Okay, I got my cutouts, my backing, cutaway, and these backings, the pre-cut ones, some, sometimes they don't really fit. So I always have tape on hand to tape down the sides so it doesn't move. So it doesn't come up once I put the pants leg on it. All right, I'm taking my pants leg. All I'm doing is inserting it right like that. And I'm just going to feel, feel for it. I'm making sure that the line the seam of the pants leg is straight up against that base. That's how I know where I have my dot at. This is where it's so crucial so that way you know. I'm feeling the frame and now I know that's not in the center. So I'm going to keep pulling it up. Pulling it up just so I can know where my center is. And that's pretty much good. It's straight. All I got to do now is sweep it out. Remember, always have the U facing up. Boom. Look at that. Pull it up. 
And now I'll take it to the machine. Make sure my pocket is out. Okay, pocket is out. Opening that up. Making sure my back is down, the bottom of the pants. And now I'm gonna frame it out. And it was right in the middle. So because I've been doing it the same way, I already have it hooped and framed out. It's already pretty much lined up. So I'm just gonna remove the tape and hit start. Another one done. That's how it looks on the gray. I'm really liking how they're coming out. Got to keep moving. Okay. I'm doing them by size. All the same size first. Alrighty. Frame it out again. Always double check everything. Always double check, make sure your bottom, your bottom is clear. Pockets are out. See, gotta move it over just a tad. Every time you reposition, make sure you reframe to lock it in. Move the tape, keep moving. Okay, this one just finished. I have the next one ready to go. Unhoop this. Take this to the machine. It's the process that keeps repeating, that keeps repeating. Of course, this would be so much easier if I had more than one, but this is my process because I only have one machine, one machine. And when I have one machine, I gotta make sure that I'm doing it the most productive and efficient way possible. Efficiency is the name of the game, baby. Step back in the room. All right, it's just fun embroidering when you have your systems in place. Like, got my systems in place and I'm knocking them out. Look at that, the exact same, the exact same, the exact same. Oh, oh. Hoop it up, hoop it up. All I see is signs, all I see is dollar signs. And I am using cutaway, cutaway backing. Okay. And before I actually, you know, hoop it, I can kind of see, get a visual. This is magnetic, so it wants to stick down, and that's good. Look at that. Perfect placement. Take it off. And here we go again. Okay. I'm tired. My feet hurt. And I'm hungry. And it's almost time for me to go pick up my son from school. Yes, he's spoiled. <laughs> he's a car rider. He does not like the bus. The good thing about this is, it's so easy. The only problem with doing like these small logos, if you have a small order and one machine, you have to constantly be taking it out because it doesn't take that long to embroider at all. This um, design actually only takes, I wanna say about five minutes. I think it's like about five minutes and then time it. I'll actually time this one to see for sure, but it's so short that I'm constantly, you know, changing it out. So, if I literally keep going, I don't get orders all the time, but this is my, um, my second large order back to back. <laughs> Go me. I can feel my stomach is empty. I'm so hungry. All right, so I'm gonna let that run and I am going to go get something to eat. I'll be back.
Okay, so in order to get the perfect placement for your logos on a hoodie, a polo, a shirt, or anything, this is the method that I use. Um, first, I always say have you a stitch out of what you're going to be embroidering, your logo, your design. And if you don't stitch it out beforehand, you can always cut out a piece of paper to the exact same size as what you're going to be embroidering. So from the top, right at the edge of the collar, the seam, you want to take your ruler and you want to place it right there. You want to go seven to nine inches down, seven to nine inches anywhere within that frame. I'm going to put my finger right at the seven inch mark. Now this has no buttons. So of course a polo shirt was much easier, but since there's no buttons, you're just using the seam, the very center of the hoodie. And I'm going to go from the center over. So you want to be anywhere from four, four to six inches. And that's almost perfect at six inches right here. You want to be closer to the left side than you are to the right side because you don't want your logo or your design to fall off in the armpit. All right, so I'm going to hold my finger. I'm literally already there, six inches and seven inches from the top. This is a size large hoodie, just in case if anyone wants to know. And I'm just going to place a little dot. I do have a fabric marker. I have an erasable fabric marker that I'm going to use. Just put a little small dot right there. It is erasable, washable. Um, I keep saying erasable, but washable. So now I'm going to find the center, pretty much the center of my design, and I'm going to place that right there. And that's where my logo is going to fall. So now I'm just going to frame that out, hoop that out. Now you don't have to use a marker. You can always put a piece of tape or something. You know, I can put my little size sticker there. Anything that's going to let you know where your center point is while you are framing it out and hooping it out on your embroidery machine. Okay, so that's how I do my measurements. Okay, so here I have my hooping station. I'm just going to put in my 5x5 five five hoop. I have my backing. I'm going to place that in. Hopefully it catches. I have a little small piece right there. Okay. And I have mine in hole number 16. Hole number 16, if you guys can see that right there. That's my placement for this large um, hoodie. Hoodies might be a little different from polos. And every brand might be a little different. This is a Cotton Heritage brand. Cotton Heritage hoodie. And I'm going to make sure, as always, that this is lined up with that line. There's no buttons or anything else, but you just want to make sure your top, um, the seams are lined up. You want to make sure everything looks straight. All right. So now I'm just going to take the top, making sure that the U is always pointing up. Place that right in there. And hook it down, just like that it's centered take it off and now let's take it on over to the machine okay it's the next day so i'm just double checking my bobbin making sure yep i have a full roll i remember i changed it so that's good and now i'm going to just go ahead and enter this in always making sure that everything is cleared so nothing catches nothing embroidered shut Tell you when you make that mistake you do not want to do it again so i'm just double checking everything it's a little off because i was doing the sweatpants and now that's perfect reframe it and here we go cut that light on so you guys can see my light was off All right, let's unhoop this one. So now you want all of them to line up pretty much in the same area, right? This one is a size large, keep that in mind. This one is a size medium. Ooh, hit the camera. This one is a size medium. And as you can see, pretty much in the same area. 
This one is going to come over just a slight bit more because it's a different size. Right. So I'm going to keep rocking and rolling, knock out all the rest of these hoodies, and then we'll get to the sleeves. Okay, so that is finished, and it literally took seven minutes. Seven minutes to stitch this logo out. So not bad at all. I had actually never timed it. I was saying it has to be like around five, six minutes, but a complete seven minutes to stitch out. Yes, I like to work comfortably. There's nothing like working at home where you can dress and be however you want. So something about a robe that makes me feel good while I'm working. So I'm just finishing these up and then I'm gonna move on to the sleeves. All right, last hoodie is finally done. So here comes the most tedious part of all when it comes to embroidery is cleaning up. Clean up, clean up, everybody clean up. But there's no everybody, it's just me. So literally, I have to go through every garment and I have to cut away all the excess backing, make sure everything is nice and clean before I ship it off to the customer. So I'm doing all that now before I move on to the sleeves. Okay, so I have my sleeve I'm gonna do for all of the, the um, sweatsuits. All the other parts are done. This is my stitch out right here. It's on a black backing, so that's why you can't really see the black part. Just a really small logo. So when you have something this small, you wanna use like your fast frame. So I'm just gonna see which one. This one is gonna be just a little bit too close, even though it still fits. I just wanna give myself enough room so I don't hit. I could even use, these look really similar i think this one is the bigger one though these look almost the exact same size but they're not why would they make two like almost the exact same size all right so this one is the bigger one so i'm going to use this one it's going to go right here now when i put this in now all i need is some sticky backing so i'm going to get my sticky backing got this off of amazon Make sure that's good enough. I've showed this when I unbox it. There's a lot more other pieces and sizes that come with it. It's an eight and one. So you get eight pieces all together. I have a full unboxing. Just because this is the only one I need for today and for the purposes of time. So you just take off your sticky backing. You're going to tear it right on. Um, you're just going to place it right on. gonna mash that down and all I'm gonna do bend that to the actual frame so it can fit now this is a really really small piece so technically I don't have to tear this if I don't want to I can just let that stick but I am so I'm just going to go ahead and tear this part off Hear that this is really small so I'm just gonna cut cut the excess away cut the excess away okay and now you can do this off the machine or before you're just gonna put that on just like that and screw and lock that in place so let's go on over to the machine just gonna lock that in place right here, right now. Make sure that's nice and secure and straight. All right, there we go. Let's go to the machine. All right, this fits in just like a regular frame. So I'm just gonna put this in. Mm -mm. Push that back. That's locked in place. I'm gonna take my sleeve. So I'm just gonna place this in just like so. You gotta make sure you put that bottom underneath this. I'm just gonna check my bottom one more time because I finished all, I'm good. Still got a lot left. The very first time I used this, I sewed my sleeve shut. So I am not trying to do that again. I'm gonna take this all the way up gonna try to make sure it is centered now I'm going to frame this out where I want it 
have to remember to flip the design. I'm going to flip the design. Okay, so I have my presser foot where I want it. I'm just going to now frame it out. I'm gonna contour it just to make sure it's not hitting the sides. I wanna make sure it stays in. All right, and that seems to be perfect. I'm gonna add on these clips just to make sure um, my sleeve doesn't move, hopefully. They don't knock off. And I'm gonna go slow. And I'm gonna hit start. All done. Take those clips off. And now with this, it makes it so easy because all I have to do is literally tear it off. And look at that, the perfect sleeve logo. How about that, guys? All done with the 8-in-1 fast rings from Racoma. And another one. And another one. Okay, I am finally finished with all of these hoodies. I'm just going to clean it up and then fold them up, weigh them all, and ship them out to my customer. Um, I just want to tell you guys, I just want to say, don't be like me. Because it took me forever to really get started and really get going with my embroidery business. Like I said earlier, I've said in previous videos, I was kind of intimidated, but at the same time, you know, I did have a few issues when I first got it because I think my family, my cousin and my friend kind of dinged my machine up. So, you know, they had to come out and fix it. And every time I attempted, I was just like, you know what? Not today. But now that I'm really getting into it and I'm, you know, kind of worked out all my issues, all my dilemmas that I had as far as, you know, learning curves and everything, because yes, there is a learning curve. But guess what? Now, day by day, it's getting easier and easier. And I'm mad at myself. I'm beating myself up because had I went ahead and started time I got my machine, I'd be making a killing. So I'm letting you know, once you get your embroidery machine, start right away. Take those training classes. I met people at Deco Summit. I met this guy who had his machine. I don't know if he said a year or two years. Never had even opened it. I'm like, what are you doing? So it doesn't matter what piece of equipment you have. I talked to some of you guys and you talk about how your silhouette cameo is on the floor in the box. Your heat press is in your garage. You know, y'all letting money just go. Y'all just letting money go off the table. Y'all letting other people's businesses grow and yours is not, you know, where it could be if you don't take the time to actually learn. So I say all that to say, don't be like me because here it is over a year later and I'm just getting into it. But had I started when I first got my machine, I'd be way further along. So guys, if you are interested in getting your embroidery machine, single needle, multi-needle, multi-head, link is down below in the description box because it's not hard. It's really not hard at all. So if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. It's, you know, yes, every day is not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. You know, you will have some trial and error. There is a huge learning curve, but when I tell you the potential that you can make, the income that you can make off of it, I don't like learning new stuff, but at the same time, I like learning new stuff. I like challenging myself. I like pushing myself. And there's tons of classes that you can take, tons of videos you can watch, like me. I'm going to be posting a lot more, a lot more, because I'm learning a lot more. So I'm definitely going to be posting a lot more. So. I'm going to go ahead and fold all of this up so that way I can hurry up and ship it out to my customer. They already asked for more. <laughs> but listen, that's what happens when you start an embroidery business. You find one or two companies, they start, you know, word of mouth. Um, see who did that, who did that. Next thing you know, orders start coming in. I did this, uh, the, my last video with the polo shirts I did for the company. The guy loved them. He was like, yo, I'm about to refer you to like three or four other companies. That's how your business can take off. All you need is a few people, you know, to get your business out there. You go out there, and next thing you know, if you do good work, people will refer you to other people. And next thing you know, you got a full-fledged 
embroidery business because not everyone can embroider so if you are the go-to for your for your town you can make a killing schools churches all kind of places companies businesses everybody want company shirts everybody want business shirts keep that in mind everyone small businesses everyone needs something done and most people want it done professionally I'm not taking huge huge orders not yet because again I just have one machine one machine for right now until one day I scale God blesses me in the meantime you can always message me down below so if you do want to message me my email is down below move in grace apparel at gmail.com I'm gonna be having another email address coming soon I am building a whole new website it's gonna have so much on there so stay tuned for that that hopefully that'll be out um, at the beginning of next month so it's gonna have a lot of stuff templates of all kinds of stuff where you can download as well so that email um, that email and website is coming soon all right trying to get a lot of things in order and in place structured much better for you all nevertheless I'm gonna fold all this up I'm gonna show you up close how they look and hope you guys have enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe as always turn on your notification bells and hit that like button smash the like button for me as always moving grace i'll see you guys in the next video bye